good morning and welcome to all our students uh, thank you for connecting we will keep journeying through the book of acts we are now learning about the missionary journeys of paul um, and uh, i really want to encourage uh, all our students on the three platforms uh, here on campus online as well as uh, e-learn uh, to read through the book of acts uh, and if possible i think i had recommended a movie which is based on the nkjv version of acts it's um, the they've attempted to go by scripture and uh, depict what scripture shares so the movie is very simply called the acts of the apostles so if you would like to just watch that as well it will uh, really help you with your imagination uh, of you know all the things that are going on so uh, today you know we have come to uh, acts chapter 16 we've seen earlier in acts 15 the jerusalem council and that special uh, decision that was taken in order to help gentiles those who were saved born again um, you know the leaders felt that it's not right to tell them that circumcision is an essential for salvation so that's the decision that they made and they communicated it clearly remember we saw how um, how good the early church and the early church leaders are in governance so uh, Paul and Barnabas, when they had an issue with this uh, particular circumcision matter, uh, they did not just jump into a conclusion, but beautifully, they took the matter to the elders in uh, uh, Jerusalem uh, because uh, it was serious. And this was uh, a matter which was spread across the region, some parts of Judea, uh, and thereby uh, they gave the matter to the elders in Jerusalem. And then, you know, we saw how it was not a one man show. Uh, so it was brought up uh, to the people and even Peter shared his experience of how God touched the lives of Gentiles um, through his ministry to Cornelius. So uh, once Peter discussed all this, uh, then the people were willing and they said, OK, fine, you know, let's go ahead with it. And there was an agreement. So that again is wonderful. Otherwise, imagine if Peter was just very dictatorial and he said, no, you know, I'm telling you, you have to do this. Um, that would have given us uh, a, a sort of a standard for leadership of that kind. But it was not like that. It was definitely discussed with all the leaders. And then, you know, the matter was um, uh, decided. So again, you know, it takes discernment regarding the particular matter to uh, recognize whether that's something that one leader, a leader can uh, make a decision about or uh, a set of leaders make a decision about. So then finally, they made a decree and uh, they went ahead and they um, you know, wrote it out and told uh, Paul and Barnabas to go ahead, go back to Antioch and share this uh, in a very clear cut way it was written out uh, the exact things that need to be done. So we saw how um, they said that, uh, yes, circumcision is not a requirement for salvation for the Gentiles. Uh, but there were a couple of other things, <coughs> such as abstaining from food offered to idols, from blood, uh, from things that are strangled, and from sexual immorality. Uh, and we also discussed why, right? So culturally um, uh, and uh, worship-wise, maybe the Gentiles were used to these practices. But once they came into the fold or the kingdom of God, um, the right lifestyle was necessary for the Gentiles. So maybe there were believers who were continuing in these practices. And at some point, uh, you know, uh, the leaders had to tell them that uh, for us as believers, uh, such a lifestyle is not fitting. And uh, thereby they addressed matters connected to behavior and lifestyle and not change the doctrine, isn't it? So they kept with the truth of God's word. And that is so beautiful. Now, following that, we saw the ministry that continued in uh, Syria 
um, in the church of Antioch. Remember, we saw the uh, Sidian Antioch or Pisidian Antioch, however you want to call it, uh, and uh, what happened over there when Paul and Barnabas went. Now they're back to the Antioch of Syria, which is the one which is mentioned in Acts chapter 11. Uh, and over here, there is a church, a wonderful church. So they continue to minister. And we saw how um, this time around, they had prophets with them. They had people like Judas, Silas, they were prophets. And so we can understand that the church of Antioch was moving in the gifts of the spirit and or rather, you know, they were being equipped in the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit. So um, uh, they were strengthened. Uh, remember, we said 1 Corinthians 14.3, uh, what is prophecy all about? Exhortation, um, edification, comfort, same thing. So as these prophets minister to the people, they were strengthened. And, uh, you know, then we, we see that they uh, continued ministry in this way and uh, Silas decided to stay back. Now, Paul and Barnabas, they were uh, thinking of setting out on the next missionary journey. So verse 36 is where the second missionary journey of Paul actually begins. So the whole planning and, you know, what they uh, really intended to do, um, they were kind of getting those things in order. I will once again show you the picture of how this journey will go. Yes. So the first one was fairly simple. Uh, we just saw that, you know, they went in a certain route and they just came back along the same route strengthening the churches but here the second missionary journey of uh, again apostle paul remember from 36 we also saw that whole issue about um, uh, john mark and the personality clashes of uh, paul and barnabas um, and so here, only Paul's journey is marked out. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, Luke does not mention Barnabas's journey. Okay, uh, But of course, they were in communication. We read later on in Paul's epistles how they, um, you know, like uh, John Mark was, was somebody who came back to be a supporter to Paul's ministry. So now let's look at the map here. And... Uh, try to register. I'm showing you the maps a little more often uh, just so, you know, it's easier when we read the passages for you to recognize uh, these places. So I'm hoping, can you see clearly, uh, everyone? Are you able to? Yeah, okay, fine. So Antioch of Syria, right? Uh, this is where we are at right now. Now the journey will have to start off. And so look at the arrows. The arrows are pointing in this direction where um, uh, Paul goes to the Cilicia region. And uh, remember, there were people along this place uh, whom they had ministered to, uh, Derb, uh, Derby, Lystra, uh, Iconium, Antioch. We are familiar with all these places. Now we'll see uh, as we read today that it was Paul's desire to go, uh, uh, you know, into Asia, okay? So he wanted probably to go somewhere like this. This way he wanted to make his journey, right? Uh, but what happened is uh, the Holy Spirit led him and he went on in a different route, okay? He went on via uh, Mysia, Bithynia, to Troas. And in Troas, we will uh, see that uh, the way Luke is writing, suddenly he'll start using uh, we. Okay. Uh, till that time, it'll be, and they did this, and they went, and you know, it'll be like that. But after, uh, after at Troas, you'll suddenly notice that he'll say, and we. So then it gives us the understanding, Luke joined them here. Now, from here, okay, uh, Paul is really wondering, where should I go? Because his desire was to go into Asia and minister in Asia. But 
God will lead him uh, all along. In the book of Acts, we have seen the direction of the Holy Spirit, uh, the way in which Paul was led to go and wait in Damascus. And um, Ananias, God spoke to him and said, okay, go to Paul's house, meet him, pray for him. Uh, and everything was clear cut. We saw how the angel came and rescued Peter. In Acts chapter 12, directed by the power of God, uh, then, you know, there are so many instances. We we continue to see, you know, the way in which God leads them, uh, the way, you know, Paul gets, uh, Peter gets called to go minister to the paralyzed, to, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the man who is uh, lame. So there are many things that happen. We even look at uh, Philip. Remember how the Holy Spirit speaks to him and says, okay, overtake the chariot. So it's full of the direction of the Holy Spirit. So that's something for us to learn. When we think about life, we think about ministry, being led by the Holy Spirit. The next steps uh, must be guided by the Holy Spirit. And uh, Paul's planning, Paul's uh, uh, mission trip planning is really based on what the Holy Spirit is showing to him. Now, why do we think that, uh, you know, it's important to listen to the Holy Spirit before we make our plans, even for ministry? Anyone? Uh, yeah, please unmute and uh, speak so we can hear you. Uh, okay, okay, John. I uh, couldn't hear you very clearly. Could you please come again? Okay, uh, all right. Uh, yeah, again, wasn't very uh, clear. Is that only me or even you couldn't hear? Okay, uh, maybe it's uh, some. I'll just uh, say it again, Pastor. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we can hear you, John. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Pastor, I was saying, uh, Holy Spirit knows and from the beginning. <laughs> That's and true. And He also knows what is best for us. So That's we true. Need to yeah, yeah. That 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 is how uh, we understand the leading of the Holy Spirit, because maybe the hearts of the people were not ready by then. Imagine, you know, Paul goes into Asia because he wants to do that and then uh, his ministry is not that fruitful there or he encounters some major opposition. Anything could have happened. Maybe for God, as Paul, um, John pointed out, uh, God knows the end from the beginning and the Holy Spirit knows the mind of God. And that's why God shared with Paul that the right timing okay or the kairos moment as we talk about was to go into this region called as macedonia so let's quickly look look at uh, the region so from here he is led and we will also see the way in which god speaks to him so you know he will he will um see it in a dream dream a vision Okay, he'll see it in a vision. So from here, he'll go on to these cities and notice that all these cities are kind of port cities. Kenyapolis okay, and Philippi, very close to the uh, agency. Uh, and uh, some ministry will happen in all of these places. Uh, and he will come to a very important city, like post Philippi, uh, I think a important city would be Thessalonica where uh, he will come and uh, do the ministry. Now, both of these are, uh, you know, like port cities. In Thessalonica, we'll notice that there'll be a very um, strong opposition uh, for Paul's work. And uh, he'll need to be rushed out of Thessalonica. And in Thessalonica, he'll stay for a short period of time, just for about, you know, four weeks or so, and uh, then move on to Beria. Uh, so any idea uh, like how long it's been since um, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Anyone? Just roughly like in terms of the years, how many years has it been so far? You know, we've, we've been talking. For us, it's a few weeks, but uh, some years have passed by in the book of Acts. So where are we right now as far as timeline is concerned? I think pasta. Uh -huh. It has uh, 
the the Holy Spirit was poured around three thirty AD uh -huh. when Christ went. In. So when I yeah. get to twenty twenty three minus that, I get nine one hundred one thousand nine hundred ninety nine. 97 okay. years okay or 93 okay. years okay oh you calculated that way um uh okay who was this sorry i didn't look at the slubega yeah oh. it was oh me. yeah 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 yes slubega uh, so what i meant to ask was from the outpouring of the holy spirit let's say as you said 30 ad okay 30 or 33 ad from that time now we are at we are into the second missionary journey. So my question is, how many years has it been from Acts 2 to Acts 16? That's the question. It is roughly between 15 to 17 years, around there. Okay, good. Yeah, that's true. Thank you, Lubega. You seem to be very good at, uh, you know, understanding dates and timelines. Um, that's correct. So we are... Uh, Lubega said about 17 years or so, 15 to 17. Uh, it could be, it could be about 19 years. Okay, 19 years or around there. Uh, so what we have seen is from uh, about, you know, 30 AD for nearly eight years or uh, up to a decade was all about the Church of Jerusalem. It was all about the Church of Jerusalem because Acts 2 to Acts 8, is that first, uh, you know, rough decade that we we witnessed. So we just saw the church grow. We just saw the strength of the leaders. We just saw the stepping out of uh, volunteers and the church governance and, you know, all these matters we, we saw. Beautiful it was. We saw people like Philip stepping out and Peter and John going, you know, and giving them that apostolic support and so many things happened. But from Acts 9, we are moving into the next decade till Acts 15. Okay. So what did we see Acts 9 to 15? Anyone? If you can summarize one or two points. Some key points. Just key points required. Acts 9 to 15. We see in Acts 9, around, I think it is the conversion of Paul. We see uh -huh. in 10, I, I think in 10, we see that uh, Peter is preaching to Cornelius. Yep, correct. And I think, uh, and I think in 15, it is all about the, the council in Jerusalem. Great, lovely. So it's like putting some pieces, pieces of the puzzle together. So Lubega has given some pieces of the puzzle. Uh, what about Acts 11, 12, 13? 14, anyone? Just share one line, maybe that, that's sufficient. Okay, not able to remember too much information. Okay, let me tell you. So, we saw uh, the conversion of Cornelius, Acts chapter 10. Then uh, we went on to see um, uh, the Church of Antioch. So Acts 11 is all about the Church of Antioch, how Paul goes and brings, uh, uh, sorry, I'm saying it the other way. Barnabas goes and he brings Paul. And for one year, they are strengthening the church in Antioch. Okay. Then after that, we saw that uh, in Jerusalem, uh, Herod, he kills, he puts the knife, um, what, what do you say, knife, uh, sword to his head, meaning uh, James was killed. James, the brother of John, was killed. Uh, and then he wanted to kill Peter. So Acts 12 is all about Peter in the prison, the church praying for him. Peter coming out and you remember that uh, very uh, uh, grand march of Herod and how he dies, uh, uh, you know, uh, struck uh, by God. So these are all things we see in Acts 12. And Acts 13, the picture changes, goes back to uh, what's happening in the church of Antioch, where the leaders of the church, they are praying, they are ministering to God. And then God says, set apart for me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work for which I have called them. So they are set apart 
that after they are set apart uh, acts 13 you know we uh, we read on you know they prepare to go uh, and then the missionary journey starts uh, do you recall this place called um, uh, uh, was it pa yeah paphos right so um, they go there once again where is that bar jesus um, elimus destination i think it is paphos so where they go and they minister to Sergius Paulus, uh, an intelligent man. Uh, correct, Paphos. There's a sorcerer, right? And then they have to uh, <clears throat> they have to overcome the powers of darkness in order for that uh, man of influence to know God. Uh, and so they deal with him, uh, deal with the powers of darkness. From there, they move on to so the missionary journey. Basically, from 13, it's the mis missionary journey. One important place that they go to is, of course, Antioch of Sidia. And we saw how initially people are believing there. Um, and, uh, you know, the Jews, then later on, they suddenly turn against Paul. So uh, Paul is quite open to ministry to the Gentiles. So he says, OK, if you all don't want, let me go to the Gentiles. I'll start preaching to the Gentiles. So they minister over there and then, you know, the other places uh, that uh, we looked at, Iconium. But remember Lystra. Lystra is a very special place uh, because uh, in Lystra, what happened? Anyone? Let's look at Acts like a story. OK, so it's like a movie. So tell me, uh, what happened in Lystra? Something very special happened. Uh, Timothy. Uh, okay, correct. Timothy is there, but Timothy comes a little um, later. Uh, but a miracle happened in Lystra, in Acts uh, 14. Correct. So there was a man who was uh, lame from... Uh, does it say, yeah, from birth, from his mother's womb. And uh, similar to Acts 3, this man was able to uh, rise up and move around. And uh, the people of Lystra tried to worship. You recall that? Uh, they said thought that some Greek gods have come, uh, Hermes and Zeus, uh, and, you know, they uh, tried to worship them. And then Paul and Barnabas, they got so upset and angry. And then they said, hey, you shouldn't be worshipping us. You should be worshipping God, who is the creator. So it's a very similar story to uh, what we see in Acts chapter 3, the beautiful gates um, incident. And then, you know, would be the uh, in Lystra, another key thing that happened is Paul got stoned. Remember, we saw that it was so uh, different because in our understanding, Paul may have even died because he was thrown out of the city. But all the believers came around him uh, and then, you know, he, he just uh, stood up and he went the next day. You, you recall that? So that happened in Lystra. Uh, and then we saw... You know, the ministry keeps going on. They don't stop. They go to uh, Derby or Derb and then they preach there uh, and they're going on building the people of God. They're going on, uh, you know, strengthening the work of the ministry. So uh, a ministry continues and uh, then what they do is they carry on. They carry on back. The journey goes back to uh, Syria, Okay, back to Antioch. Now, Acts 15. We are all aware, again, that same thing of there were certain men who were uh, teaching wrong doctrine um, in yeah regarding that circumcision matter. And so Acts 15 is full of uh, discussions and conclusion uh, and a decision. So I hope uh, uh, we are clear. Now, good. So we are clear. Then Acts 8 to Acts 16. Again, a, a decade has passed. OK, so. Uh, Roughly about, you know, uh, 18, 19 years have gone by. So we can imagine, you know, you can imagine the ages of the people who are part of that baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now they must be older. Uh, there must be more leaders in the church. The church has grown big. Um, we have, uh, uh, what else? We have ministry in a lot of different places. Antioch is also another prominent church right now. And uh, Paul has gained you know, people's uh, trust uh, finally. So all these things have actually taken place. Now, 
what we must uh, recognize is that the second missionary journey okay in which only paul is is going about uh, ministering uh, and barnabas is not with him uh, and we'll also see that this would be the uh, longest missionary journey okay so about 3 years uh, <coughs> we would find paul makes the entire journey uh, in about Three years. So we were at Thessalonica, right? We said there were some issues of persecution. Then uh, quickly, uh, they send him off to a place called Beria. We'll see uh, Beria. There were people who were so committed to the word of God. We'll read about them. Then we'll come back to the Achaean region. Achaean region is famous. Um, uh, firstly, they go to Athens. Okay, Athens is an intellectual city. So, you know, very philosophical, very well, you know, well-read, learned people, conversations, discussions. So Athens is like that, Greece. Um, uh, and, and from there, you know, they'll move on to Corinth. Corinth is more of a city known for its immorality. Okay, so uh, we'll we'll come to that and how Paul does ministry over there, what kind of ministry. And uh, from there, we will see that he'll go on to Ephesus. Okay, Ephesus uh, is more of, a, uh, we'll, we'll find again, there'll be worship. Worship is very important in, in Ephesus. So a goddess, a diner, she's worshipped in uh, Ephesus. And Ephesus was uh, known uh, uh, for a lot of, um, uh, like, you know, black magic and uh, sorcerers uh, and uh, people like that. So we'll see how uh, something supernatural takes place in Ephesus and then people start to believe um, and uh, people were even ready to let go of their sorcery and their practices of uh, involving in the occult. So that is Ephesus. And Ephesus and Corinth will be uh, among the most important cities of our second missionary journey. Uh, then, of course, you know, he'll move on. Uh, the thing is, when we look at the missionary journey and we say, okay, it is so many years, it is so many years, usually it starts at Antioch and then it ends at Antioch. Okay. Uh, this time around, Paul would feel that he would like to go through uh, Jerusalem. So he'll come to Jerusalem and then close the loop, go back to Antioch. So this is our second missionary journey. And I'm hoping that, you know, you'd be quite clear about, um, you know, how this actually unfolds. So now let us read uh, about the different things that happen. So we are here at Antioch and, you know, we are starting our journey. He's going to those older churches. And at this point, at Acts 16 is what John shared. He mentioned about Timothy. Uh, Paul uh, took Timothy along and we saw how he had such a heart of a, a spiritual father to care for Timothy, not just at a time when, uh, you know, like in that moment, but beyond. So he thought about Timothy. How will Timothy do ministry? His father is... Uh, Greek, uh, sorry, Jewish, his mother is uh, uh, Greek. So uh, maybe what we can do is we can get him circumcised. That way, nobody will question him whether he's a Jew or not. So he'll have a better opportunity to minister to the Jews. They'll be more accepting of Timothy. So that's how he treated Timothy. Uh, so we were here, right, Lystra. So let's now move on quickly and we'll come to uh, Traus and see how uh, he will go further to Macedonia. Okay, So sometimes, you know, we talk about these places in terms of uh, the region. So we would say the Judean region, then uh, Galatia, okay, Galatia or Galatian region, uh, or uh, we, we may say like Asia, okay, uh, 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 Asian region or Macedonia, Achaia. So it all those terms are more uh, encompassing the region. So don't get confused. Okay, come on. Let's uh, go now. Go back to Acts chapter 16 here. Uh, we finished uh, talking about uh, Timothy. So I'll move on from verse 6. So this is where we will read about the direction of the Holy Spirit to uh, Paul. Would uh, someone like to pick up from 6 and read till 10, please? Acts chapter 16, verse 6 to 10. Yes. Now, when they had gone through 
Pergia and the region of Galatia, they had they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they, uh, they came down to Toros, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Now after he had seen the vision, immediately he sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord has called us to preach the gospel to them. Pastor, you are on mute. Oh, okay, okay. So sorry, Zeli. Yeah, thank you for reading, uh, Zeli. I, what I was saying is, uh, you know, I just stand corrected. Uh, I had shown the direction uh, of Paul's, uh, the, his desire to go into Asia. Uh, but then, you know, we see that he wanted to go into Bithynia. So uh, sorry for that. Uh, now, instead of that place he's directed into macedonia but what is the way in which the holy spirit actually guided him uh, he guided him through a vision a vision appeared to him in the night and it's um, somewhat special uh, you see there was a macedonian man so when paul is asking the question lord who should i minister to when god showed him a macedonian man he interpreted that as God is asking me to go into the region of Macedonia. Okay, So uh, this man in the vision, he says, come over to Macedonia and help us. And so, you know, Paul now uh, wants to go into Macedonia and preach the gospel to them. So in Macedonia, okay, there were, remember, we, we saw those places, uh, Philip, uh, Neapolis, uh, Philippi, um, uh, and you know Apollonia and uh, yeah at Atlatia or something. So in that region now Paul is going to preach. But firstly, let's look at his ministry in this uh, very important key place known as Philippi. Uh, so Philippi is a city where uh, you know we find that. Uh, there was a lot of trading going on and uh, usually in philippi we would um, see that people would come wealthy people would come up to um, uh, by by the river body they would come by the river body and they would do their trading they would do their talking their socializing and all that so paul found it easier to find people uh, you know near the uh, water body and so he would go there also and he would start to preach so when he was preaching in philippi he impacts a whole bunch of people but we come to know uh, of the name of a lady known as lydia okay and lydia is a very wealthy businesswoman, uh, and uh, we'll we'll see what business she had but she is the main person that we must remember as far as Philippi is concerned. So would somebody like to read for us from verse 11 to verse 15? It's about uh, Philippi, it's about uh, Lydia. Verse 11 to 15. Therefore, okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, so maybe uh, Lubega, you could read. Uh, is that okay, Zeli? We'll give Lubega an opportunity. From chapter 16, verse 11 to 15, right? That's right, that's right. Therefore, sailing from Traus, when they ran a straight course to Samothrace, and the next day came to Neopolis, and from there to Philippi, which is the foremost city that, that part of that part of Macedonia, a colony. And we were staying in that city for some days. And on the Sabbath day, 
we went out of the city to the riverside where praying was customarily done oh customarily made and we sat down and spoke to the women who met there now a certain woman named lydia had us she was a seller of purple from the city of Thaitila, Thay Thay who worshipped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul, and when she and her household were baptized, she begged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. She, so she persuaded them. Amen. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Lubeka. So as we've seen here, a couple of highlights. Uh, remember, I said, sailing from Troas, we ran a straight course. Who's the we? Who's the we? We have Paul, Silas, Timothy, and the language changed. Till, till now, it was, you know, and Paul and they and all of that. But now it's we. So who is we? Luke. Because he's the writer. So when he says we, he's including himself. Even Luke was there at Troas. That's the point. Okay. So Luke is also on the team now. So it's a full team that has gone to Philippi. So they go to this place. And why Philippi? Why Corinth? Why Ephesus? You see, the, the places that are along the sea, it was easier to get to those places. And it, it those are like business centers. People would come easily and uh, be there. So also think about this. Paul could have picked any city, isn't it? He could have uh, gone to any city. But he mainly went to um, key cities because when we impact a, a key city. Okay, first of all, we should be called to that. But uh, he, here's the point: like when we impact a key city, uh, generally the word goes out. People who come there will hear about Jesus. Their lives will be transformed. Again, they'll go back. So, as they travel back to their places, they are all carrying the gospel with them, and they're all, you know, they all uh, end up being witnesses uh, for God. So. That way, there is some strategy okay, that the Holy Spirit has. Uh, uh, so Paul is usually going to these key cities. So we said that uh, a trade, lot of trade happens. So on the Sabbath day, uh, the riverside was the place where people would meet. Uh, of course, there was prayer there and uh, you know socializing and uh, whatever other things that they used to do. But women who met there... That also shows us that in Philippi, women had some, uh, you know, uh, prominence uh, and they had some uh, respect. Okay, uh, like of course uh, other places they did, but then they wouldn't be treated with with um, uh, that sort of uh, how do you say that? Like you know, given some positions or elevated positions, but in Philippi it is so. So there were women who met there. So. That would have been easy for Paul to go and uh, use as a platform to preach the gospel. So he went and preached. So notice uh, there is no bias uh, about uh, a poor man, a rich man, uh, uh, you know, Sergius Paulus, or uh, uh, later we'll see they'll minister to a slave girl. So uh, how much money people have doesn't matter. They still need the gospel. Which gender they are doesn't matter. They still need the gospel. Which city they are doesn't matter. They still need the gospel, right? Or which uh, sect of the society, Jew, Gentile, everyone needs the gospel. And that's the kind of ministry that Paul is actually doing. So they minister to the women and there this woman, Lydia. Uh, I said that she was a uh, recognized businesswoman. So what was her business about? Seller of purple. So in those days, being uh, somebody uh, who is a seller of purple, or it's like you know, purple is uh, it's got to do with royalty. So you can imagine she was she was a very rich lady. 
very very rich lady back in those days uh, and from the city of uh, Thyatira but another nice thing about Lydia was she was a worshipper of God so she's a rich uh, she's a businesswoman she's devoted to God and she gets saved her whole family is baptized then what else about Lydia she is very um uh you know gracious maybe that's the word we can use for her because she wants to host this team of ministers of god and she asks them you know if you judge me faithful come to my house and stay so she persuaded so you notice how when god is guiding paul into macedonia paul may have wondered lord will my will our ministry be successful uh, and uh, how will we minister here will we have some place where there is an opening but god made an opening isn't it through this woman called as lydia and she herself was willing in this case to host them so it was really good uh, that you know they were able to touch uh, this person's life now let's continue to see uh, what other ministry will happen here in philippi so one person lydia now let's see who's the next person here so uh, maybe I'll just uh, share this quickly. We have a little bit of time. So the next person is they find a slave girl. Okay. And uh, she's possessed by a spirit of divination. Um, and because she had a spirit, a spirit of divination and fortune telling, um, there was a person who was utilizing that by, uh, you know, making money out of her but this girl went around uh, telling about uh, you know paul and the team uh, notice again luke writes this girl followed paul and us in verse 7 so he's also there and she kept uh, sort of giving free publicity for them because she said these men are the servants of the most high god uh, who proclaim to us the way of salvation and she did this for many days okay we'll discuss more about this later but when she kept doing it at some point paul got very annoyed and then uh, he recognized or he discerned that it's not just this girl but the spirit inside her who's doing this so he casts out that uh, casts out that uh, spirit of uh, divination but unfortunately it affects the income of the master of that slave girl okay so that man is so upset that uh, uh, you know he uh, sort of complains yeah uh, there's a complaint against uh, uh, Paul and his team and they are seized. They are dragged and, uh, uh, you know, they are finally put into the prison. So that's what happens. So remember, we read the Philippians, rejoice in the Lord always. Uh, and again, I say rejoice. So, you know, Paul is actually uh, having this experience of a prison in Philippi. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, so... When he writes to the Philippians, he's writing with with uh, all these experiences in mind. So you can just imagine how wonderful uh, for him to still speak about the greatness of God despite all these challenges. So he's in the prison, and then there is a description regarding how he was treated in the prison. Uh, it says um, uh, they were beaten with rods right uh, and then when they had laid many stripes on them they threw them into prison commanding the jailer to keep them securely having received such a charge he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks so they are beaten one they are put in the inner prison too and their feet in the stocks so feet in the stocks is for you know very uh, tough criminals when you suspect that they will run away or they'll do something you kind of secure their feet that you can't even move so that's what it means so that was the position of paul and silas in the jail so then we'll go ahead after the break and see how exactly they respond to this and what happens okay so thank you everyone it's nice to have an interactive class so let's come back in 10 minutes and we will uh, continue. Thank you.